Hello, welcome to our program. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, pathologist at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with PATH Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association. I'll mention that uh, the Digital Pathology Association does offer complimentary memberships to those uh, in developing countries and those who are trainees in any sort of pathology training program. Our program is uh, uh, a case-based uh, review of uh, selected principles in surgical pathology, um, particularly in the domains that uh, I spend most of my time in. Um, of course, there are other uh, materials available through uh, the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, which you can avail yourself of uh, by becoming a member. Our patient today that introduces the concept is an older gentleman who's uh, had uh, anemia that seems to be worsening. Um, and uh, this, of course, uh, brings us into the realm of clinical pathology, where um, classification of anemia uh, can be very helpful to guide uh, treatment and guide uh, investigation. Uh, in his case, his uh, anemia was a hyperchromic microcytic type of anemia and he had a modestly elevated platelet count of about 500,000. Additionally, it was evident that uh, there was iron deficiency as he had both a low serum iron, elevated ser uh, total iron binding capacity, and a low ferritin. So those most commonly uh, are the result of uh, some sort of uh, blood loss. Um, and in males, uh, the most common causes would of course be from the gastrointestinal tract. Well, that limits it somewhat, but of course, we know that the uh, intestinal tract is a long uh, tubular structure, uh, and there are a number of possibilities. Uh, in the upper intestinal tract, we can certainly have uh, ulcers. We can have tumors that become ulcerated. We have uh, polyps and tumors in the lower GI tract that can become ulcerated and leak blood over a long period of time. We have patients who have uh, inflammatory bowel disease that gives us massive ulceration and varying degrees of uh, ulceration with the potential for blood loss. And then we have the primary uh, vascular lesions, whether they're varices in the esophagus or angiodysplasia in the colon, those can likewise lead to uh, significant blood loss, anemia, and uh, iron deficiency. So uh, usually the investigation uh, in a male would be, of course, uh, upper and lower endoscopy. In his case, uh, they began with lower endoscopy um, and discovered uh, some uh, slightly uh, elevated lesions that merited biopsy. There were two of them in the more distal uh, uh, colon, descending and sigmoid, uh, and this, these samples are representative of uh, one of those uh, lesions. As you can see, it's uh, not a, a gland-forming lesion. Uh, we don't see evidence of uh, normal colonic mucosa here, uh, but instead we see uh, some areas that look to be ulcer debris, some fibrin thrombi, and then uh, more cellular tissue areas uh, where we have uh, uh, cells with some interrelationship with each other um, and uh, a sort of a purplish gray cytoplasm, uh, this inflammatory and necrotic debris. Uh, we'll look here at the other fragment uh, in this uh, lesion uh, and see uh, what we find here. Uh, again, we see ulceration. Uh, and again, we see these uh, very atypical kinds of cells here uh, with uh, hyperchromatic nuclei, scant cytoplasm, and not much in the way of cell-to-cell uh, -cell relationships. Uh, in this uh, fragment, uh, a little bit more solid uh, pattern of growth. Uh, but again, areas of clustering around, viable crust clustering around vessels, uh, some prominent nucleoli in some of these cells, um, and a, a degree of pleomorphism that is uh, not insignificant. So uh, this, of course, uh, prompts a consideration of what do we do to demonstrate uh, the kinds of lesions that uh, this might represent, and that usually is going to involve immunohistochemistry. Um, this is not something that looks like a primary neoplasm in the GI tract. And so we have to ask ourselves what kind of metastatic lesions could give this uh, uh, appraisal. Well, certainly there are several factors in our evaluation that may help us to favor primary versus metastatic. For example, if there's clearly a surface lesion, an adenoma or um, uh, prominent surface involvement, 
well, that favors a primary gastrointestinal type lesion, whereas a, a more bottom heavy lesion, submucosal with just a break or two into the epi, uh, surface epithelium may be more likely to be metastatic. Glandular lesions, of course, we would favor being primary over some of the other lesions that can be metastatic. Solid growth favors metastatic because most primary uh, intestinal tumors uh, tend to be moderately differentiated and have glandular growth pattern. If we see lymphagitic spread, that of course is gonna favor metastatic lesions as well. And then perhaps the most important factor is, is there a history of a primary tumor? Uh, because that may favor metastases. And I've listed here the, the lesions, not particularly in order of uh, frequency or importance, but the lesions which are known to metastasize to, to the ovary. Lung cancers, breast cancers, especially a lobular cancer, it can have a long delay between primary presentation and uh, the uh, development of met metastatic disease. Ovarian carcinoma, serous carcinoma most particularly, although usually these will present with peritoneal disease um, that is uh, far in excess of any uh, mucosal disease in the bowel. Uh, because it tends to grow from the outside in. Prostate cancer in close proximity, renal cancers, we've seen a, a case or two and shared one of those uh, with you uh, on our channel, and then uh, melanoma as well. Uh, in fact, it was long believed that uh, the GI tract was a favored site of metastasis because it was felt that melanoma was one of the more frequently encountered metastatic lesions in the bowel. So with that in mind, we pursued a course of uh, uh, immunoperoxidase staining. And in general, I would say that there are a couple of things that uh, we try to look for as we select the uh, markers that we're going to use. Ideally, we want a marker that uh, expresses uh, itself uh, in uh, either both cytoplasm and nucleus, or one marker that will express itself in the cytoplasm and a related marker or different marker that will express itself in the nucleus. That tends to give us the highest specificity for the diagnosis we're looking at. Here we can see that there are clearly cells which are positive cytoplasmically. And so you're trying to guess, uh, you know, is this a cytokeratin? Is this uh, a uh, uh, hep, uh, HEPAR1 type of uh, marker or RCC or something like that? But in fact, this is uh, melon A, uh, a marker of cytoplasmic uh, melanocytic differentiation. And our uh, related marker that we did was uh, SOX10. Here's the control tissue over here, uh, which you can see is a nuclear stain. And here is our tumor tissue, which you can see is even more strongly expressed uh, than the controls uh, nicely lighting up virtually every one of the uh, tumor cell nuclei. So uh, with this uh, result, we felt we had established the diagnosis of uh, metastatic melanoma. Uh, as I mentioned, this is not an infrequent uh, metastatic tumor, although we don't clinically encounter it very often. Uh, it tends to more frequently affect the small bowel with the uh, stomach, rectum, and colon being less frequently affected. Um, and if it's symptomatic, it usually is going to present with bleeding, anemia, weight loss, possibly obstruction, or pain. Um, if you have just a single lesion, um, it's conceivable that uh, this is a primary tumor, uh, though again, you'd like to see uh, in that situation a more mucosal-based uh, tumor rather than a submucosal-based tumor. Now, interestingly, in melanoma, there is evidence that resection of uh, a few metastatic lesions may actually pro prolong survival, uh, and so that was the purpose in evaluating this patient who had a known history of melanoma. Um, and uh, consideration is underway to evaluate them for resection to attempt to prolong their life. So our final sign out diagnosis on this case is malignant melanoma metastatic to colon uh, in an elderly gentleman, uh, several years post the initial presentation of his uh, primary melanoma. And if you like this program, we hope that, that uh, you'll share it uh, and certainly uh, welcome subscribers to our channel uh, because we plan to continue to release uh, new content uh, regularly, and that way you'll be sure to uh, catch it. And of course, uh, you can hit that notify bell, uh, and that will let you know when you've uh, got a new release pending from our channel. So until next time, I want to say thank you so much for joining me.